So we are going to record this so we can share it with others later. Um, second request or first request I have for you is please change your name to include your team number at the end. Uh, and so if you um, in the participant, if you click on participants and then find yourself and click on more, you can rename your name to include your team number at the end. So please do that since we have um, multiple teams joining us this evening, which is wonderful. Finally, I'm going to put in the chat again for those of you who recently joined um, a link to the styles under stress questions. That was our pre-work. Um, in that document is a link to a Google form where you uh, can share your answers. And that helps us uh, later in this presentation. So please take a moment if you haven't already to click on that link and to type in your answer so we have that data. Um, finally, uh, there's in the chat is also a link um, to the slides for tonight's session. So those are helpful to reference throughout the workshop, but especially when we're in the breakout rooms. Um, you will not, I don't believe you'll see this chat when we go in breakout rooms. So please seize this opportunity to click on the link now so you have it open in another tab and therefore you can reference it later. I'm going to paste the exact same thing back in the chat for the last few people who joined us. So you have a link both to the um, Styles Under Stress form and tonight's slides. Uh, so uh, to get before I turn things over here to Mr. John, Mr. Schultz, who will be uh, sharing their thoughts on crucial conversations with us this evening, um, I always like to start these by reminding everybody uh, that we're all in a different place in terms of our exposure to and practice with these skills. Um, for some of you here, this is your fourth time hearing about crucial conversations. Um, from my own personal experience, I can tell you it takes many more than four times to become practiced at crucial conversations. So you have plenty to learn tonight, um, regardless of how many times you've seen some of these concepts. Uh, but specifically, think about your how your role might change based on your familiarity with these ideas. Um, so for some people, all of this is completely new. For some of you, you've seen it before. When we're in our breakout rooms, when we're sharing out afterward, um, keep in mind that based on your level of experience, it's an opportunity for you to stretch um, or it's an opportunity for you to model the behavior and create space for others. Um, also, please remember, we are not done with crucial conversations after this evening. This is something that we will continue to focus on and continue to practice at all of our meetings, um, pre-season, build season, robots after dark, competitions, everything. Um, and all of those venues are places where uh, we hope we can all feel safe to practice and learn uh, these skills together. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. John and Mr. Schultz. Um, who will uh, take it from here. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate that, Mr. Schmidt. I'm very happy to see so many of you here. Uh, I'd like to especially welcome uh, Roaring Robotics uh, to, to our group as well. And uh, also to all of the new members from our team who have not been here before. Crucial Conversations is a 200-page book and a so We're going to these two things that you need to think about when you are talking with other people so that you can both make progress toward your goals. Mr. Schultz and I are going to get into character now and we have our first exam. So the setting is just after the fourth design review for this intake. Wow, the intake is so big that it moves the center of gravity far away from the middle of the robot. Hmm. Yeah, that will make our driving and climbing really unstable. I was looking at the model, and I want to show you an opportunity to change. I got it. All we have to do is change all the skill pieces to Luna. That will shift the center of gravity, and then we don't have to redesign. But that won't fix it. But I we also replace all of the bolts with rivets on the sections that are farther away from the center. I'm a genius. You must have left your brain at home, if you think that will work. 
We need to look at where we connect the intake, not what we make it out of. Now, shut up and let's work on something that will fix the problem. What do you mean, if that will work? It's a way better idea than anything you'll ever have. Okay. We're out of character now. Wow, that was ugly. That conversation and their relationship went very badly because the two people in it did not recognize what was happening. Or more precisely, they did not recognize that they were moving away from dialogue and moving into an argument where their motives were changing. Their motives were changing from what is best for the design and for our relationship. And instead they were changing to how can I win this argument that I know is best for the design? The two things that you need to think about when you're in conversation or in dialogue with other people are learn to look and make it safe. In the conversation you just witnessed, neither person could see that they were no longer maintaining their relationship. And neither person took action to make it safe for the other to come back to a meaningful conversation where the relationship could be strengthened. These are the two skills we'll be teaching tonight, along with the tools for style under stress and apologize, contrast, repeat, ask, mirror, paraphrase, and suggest. Learning to look means recognizing your part in the conversation and their part in the conversation. You want to see if either one of you has moved away from dialogue and has moved to either verbal silence or violence. At the extremes, both verbal silence and verbal violence are very easy to recognize. Either someone has stopped talking and might be running away, or someone is yelling. But there are many aspects to what verbal silence and verbal violence can look like. You want to recognize if a conversation turns crucial, when the emotions of one or both of you start ramping up. On the screen, you can see the major categories of verbal silence and verbal violence, and some keywords to help explain them such as avoiding and withdrawing for silence, or controlling and attacking for violence. In pre-work, as Mr. Schmidt had just said, we had asked that you answer 12 questions to answer your style under stress, and then add that to the Google form. Take a look again at your true answers. If your true answers are mostly in the left column, then you currently prefer verbal silence. If they are mostly in the right column, then you Please note that this is only a style that you use. It is not an alterable character trait or genetic predisposition. You can learn to change your behavior away from using these styles and instead find ways to stay in love with the other person. Have you been able to update the form? Almost. We have uh, most of our answers. All right, both have been updated. Okay, so I will jump out and we will see that yes, we have updates. screen still sharing all right so let's take a look at what those responses are okay uh, we can see that we are mostly on the left hand side we've got withdrawing avoiding and masking with withdrawing being the largest uh, however, there are a good number of people who also use the styles of controlling, labeling, and attacking. So uh, I want you to think about, granted, we have two different teams in here, but 
this is still really useful information when thinking about how others on your team may react in stressful situations. So it's kind of easy to guess, but let's take a look at what this means for the styles under stress. So this graph was populated off of each individual's answers for the 12 styles under stress. Uh, so we can see here what was obvious from the last slide. There's a whole lot of people who prefer silence. So now that you have learned to look for people going into verbal silence or verbal violence, what do you do when you see it happen? Recognizing that the other person has gone to verbal violence or verbal silence might be very easy. But being able to bring the conversation back to dialogue might not look so easy. The authors put so many tools under each one of these sections to help people find ways to get back to dialogue. But amazing, the authors, even if people don't remember, any of the tools in the book. If people try, if they simply reach out and send the person back, get there, it's successful. Without any of the other tools. So, how do you pull people back into dialogue when they're showing obvious signs of violence or silence? Or even when you think that the conversation is starting to move away from dialogue into verbal silence or violence. Things haven't gotten bad yet, but it feels like they might. This is where you have to focus on making it safe. As members of a robotics team, as humans in this world, you need to ensure that others in order to reach your combined goals. Let's say that you have recognized that you or the other person, thank you. Uh, let's say you have recognized that you or the other person are moving to verbal silence or verbal violence. Now is the time to stop talking about the thing that made the conversation turn crucial and instead work on making it safe again. You want it to be safe for both of you to be able to share your thoughts so you can understand what the true issues are and then get to work addressing those issues. So the first two skills that we will learn to make it safe are apologize when appropriate. So if you have the sudden realization that for sure I really said that, then you probably need to apologize. The other is contrast to understanding. We will get to some examples on that one in a minute. And then you will have to repeat. We are only human and we will make mistakes. Your conversation will not go perfectly. Nine out of 10 times you can build the relationship if you do the compassionate work to make it safe. You will likely have to apologize and contrast more than once. Apologizing is very effective when it is done well, and it's very ineffective when it is not done well. I'm about to ask for a few people to each share an apology that they have heard. Everyone else will vote using the emojis on the screen to show if they think it is a good apology or a bad apology. Please raise your hand if you can share how someone apologized. I'm hoping for at least a few people. When you're sharing, don't use any names and don't tell us if you thought it was a good or a bad apology. We just want to see how everybody. All right. Think about an apology that you've heard either in real life or in the media. Right. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Um. The. I heard. Um. 
was that um last year there was a situation where somebody that was pretty crucial to a part of the robot was not included in certain conversations and um the apologies that i heard were um like explaining to the person at first like that they had not like that they understood that they had made the wrong decision by not including this person um and also trying to work harder to make up get the person up to speed and try to like actively engage them in the conversation All right. Thank you, Lodum, very much for sharing that. And you did a nice job of not sharing any names or enough information for us to guess. Um, and you didn't tell us if you thought it was bad or good. So now, everybody else, uh, please vote if you thought that was a bad apology or a good apology. Using the fun little emojis that we have available to us. Those are in the React menu. I'm seeing mostly good. And people thinking it was good so far. Yeah. No thumbs up. We want hearts or shocked faces. Yeah. Just because it's easier to see the difference between a heart and a shocked face, red versus yellow. Okay. Very good. Uh, can someone else to share an apology? Something that you've heard, something that you gave, something that you are on the receiving end of. It can be robotics related. It can be family related. You can obfuscate the story as much as you want. Raise your hand if you're willing. Okay. Well, I won't make you guys sit for too long on that one then. Thank you again very much. Got a hand? I got two hands. Hand. I got Aaron and Mr. Shack. All right, Aaron, go ahead. This one's admittedly kind of non specific. Go so right ahead. I'm just, I just kind of want to gauge reaction to it. Um, the situation was. Um, I was supposed to have a certain set of documents shared with me and they didn't reach me over the course of time. And that made a piece of work I was working on a bit harder. And I was uh, saying that the next time I saw the person just as a for next time sort of thing. And the response was, I'm sorry about that. I will try not to do that in the future. Okay. All right, if we can vote again using the the uh, Zoom React panel uh, with the surprised face or the heart, if you thought it was a bad apology or a good apology. Mm. This one's a little more split, I think. Okay. Maybe more on the uh, the bad side than good. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for participating in that one. Mr. Schmidt. Would you would you like another? Sure. Um I was once told I'm trying to phrase this correctly. I'm sorry to hear that you were upset about how I shared the news with the team. Okay. All right, use those React panel emojis again. I'm sorry to hear. We're we are going all bad this time. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. The board is lighting up. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, so 
you guys get it. When I am talking about apologizing, I mean that you have to apologize from the heart, recognizing your role in the problem. I do not mean, I'm sorry if you feel that way, or I'm sorry that you misunderstood. The column on the left is sometimes called the fake apologies. And, and when it's obvious, boy, it's really obvious, right? And also written apologies through email, text, chat, it can be hard to determine sometimes uh, what is good and what is bad. So you want to aim more for in-person and more like what's on the right. I'm sorry that you are in this position. I would like to work with you to find a way to make it better. So also let me be clear, I'm not asking you to apologize for things that you didn't do just for the sake of apologizing. I'm telling you to really listen to what the other person says and to really think about what your part in the conversation was and apologize for the things that you did and said that were not helpful. You need to apologize for the heart. You have to really mean it. Or the other person will see right through you, and the trust that you are working to build will be destroyed. All right. The next skill is contrasting. I've been using contrasting throughout this presentation. Sometimes when the stakes are high, you need to be sure to say not only what you mean, but also what you do not mean. This verbal contrasting helps to clarify your intent. You'll need to say something like, I do not mean that. I do mean this to help the other person understand your true intent. So as an example, when I said I wanted you to get this done as soon as possible, I did not mean that I expect you to do robotics work outside of the meetings. I do mean that while we're in the meetings, I expect you to prioritize this task above the other robotics tasks. So here are the first two skills again in make it safe. Apologizing using compressing to understand it. And then remembering to repeat because we will all make mistakes and we will then need to fix them. There will be times when you are doing the compact hard work to make it safe and the other person is still stuck in silence. As part of making it safe, it also helps to resist interrupting and value everyone's truth, which really means to make sure that you leave room for them to answer. So here are some examples when you ask something like, I'd really like to hear your opinion or don't worry about hurting my feelings. I really want to know your thoughts. With their words, you can say, you say that you're okay. But from the tone of your voice, you seem upset. Pairing is part of active listening. I'd like to check my understanding. I think that what you're trying to say is, and then state in your own words, what you think their perspective or concern is, but then follow it up with a question. Did I understand that correctly? Gives a better opportunity for you and the other person to come to a better understanding of what the problems are. And finally comes suggest. Suggest is used specifically when the other person is in silence and they aren't sharing anything, which according to our poll earlier, it looks like we might have a lot of silence. So to help them feel safe to share, Propose something that you think could be why they are not talking to you. And propose this thing in a way that shows that you are ready to take responsibility for your words and actions. So you would do this tentatively. It might look like, 
Are you thinking that I pulled you off of that project because I thought you couldn't do it? Help them to realize that you care about them and you want to work with them to gain that understanding so that you can move forward. All right. Now that you have been introduced to these tools, we're going to go back to the scene of the crucial conversation where we find our FRC players trying to fix relationship concerns. So the setting for this is later during that same meeting. Hi, Mr. Schultz. I'm really sorry about how I acted earlier. Can we talk about it? Are you going to keep interrupting me like a bully? You felt like I wasn't respecting you. Is that right? That's right, Captain Obvious. I'm not here because I want to be mean to you or get in an argument. I am here because I want you to know that I am sorry for interrupting you and for not listening to your ideas. Fine. So you're sorry. I get it. It sounds like you are not fine. I am really interested in what's going on between us. Can you tell me? Is it something more than just what I did tonight? It's the same thing you do every time there's a technical design question. You steamroll right over what I was going to suggest. Wow. I've really been doing that? I am so very sorry. I get excited about ideas, and I just go with them. But I see that that is not helping us to work as a team. Can you help me come up with some ideas to make sure everybody's ideas get heard? Are you really going to listen to my thoughts? Yes. Okay. We're out of character again. We're going to have a breakout, five minutes. And in your small groups, I want you to analyze this conversation. How did Mr. John work to repair the relationship? What tools did he use? Remember, in the slideshow shared with you before, and again now, Mr. Schmidt, could you share that slide one more time? Just um, did. Thank you. We include that full script. So we will have a few, re a few different groups report out. So choose a speaker for your group. And if you've already reported out previously, please let someone else do it. Um, also, if you would like, uh, go ahead and type up a response if you're the uh, person to respond for your group, and then we can put those into the chat if you'd prefer not to not to talk. All right, so Mr. Schmidt, uh, five minutes, so four plus one. All right, I got four plus one set to go. I think we're all set. Um, so just to explain the four plus one thing, um, when I open up the breakout rooms, you'll all be automatically moved into a room. You'll see a timer for four minutes. However, when that time elapses, you still have 60 seconds, one more minute, hence the four plus one, to wrap up your conversation before you're forced back into our, you know, one common room. Um, so don't feel like you have to come back right away when time expires. You still get that those 60 seconds. All right. So I'm going to open up the rooms now. Here we go. All right, it looks like everybody has made it back. All right, well, welcome back. Um, I'd like to see some hands, uh, get some report out from two or three groups. Ooh, Frank, and, right up there. and please limit your comments to two or three of the tools uh, that are on this slide. Go ahead, Franklin. So what our group talked about that I think Mr. John did really well was the whole repeating thing that even though Mr. Schultz multiple times was confrontational or provocative, Mr. John always worked towards getting a collective solution that worked better for everybody. And like he was resisting the urge to snap back at him or walk away. And I think that makes it really good to eventually work towards a conclusion that works for everybody. Excellent, thank you very much. Who's next? 
Fatima. Fatima. Fatima, sorry. One of, uh, yeah. One of the tools that Mr. John used was um uh the I forgot, I think it was all contrasting, basically because he was saying that this is what I did wrong. I understand why this was wrong, and he was being really clear when he said, this is what I intend to do now. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Who else would like to share something out? AJ. One thing I also noticed that uh, Mr. Uh, John did was, uh, Mr. John did, uh, or sorry, Mr. John did uh, was um he suggested because um like he could tell like for after repeating it uh he could tell basically that mr schultz even though he said he was fine um he still was kind of feeling a little bit like not heard so he like helped he suggested ways to like um help improve that and he um basically asked like um if mr schultz could help him just like come up with some new ideas so that everyone could be heard Okay, very good. Thank you very much. All right. Well, let's let's keep moving along. Uh, and I want you to recognize that this is here in the slides. You can come back to this at any time and use it somewhat as a template of how to start a conversation. Uh, but we're going to move forward to this summary. So you've now heard some of the most powerful tools in the Crucial Conversations book. You know enough to start planning and holding crucial conversations of your own. So learning to look and making it safe. Now I'd like you to put everything together and we want you to think about how you could address one of these two issues on the screen. We're gonna give you some real time uh, in this breakout room, about 10 minutes. And during that time, I'd like you to first quickly choose either uh, scenario one or scenario two, and then play the part of the first person who talks. So if you choose scenario one, you would pretend that you had just said, why isn't my part ready yet? I marked it as a high priority. Next, imagine that the other person responds with, somebody else told me to fabricate this first. So that's just that beginning of that, of that conversation that you can tell is already turning a little bit crucial. Finally, discuss how you would respond to this other person's statement, right? So you who the part is not ready yet are now responding to the person who said, that they were told to fabricate something else first. Please, please feel free to make up a bit of a backstory if that helps. And you can share that out with us as well. So you have a big chunk of time because you have all these new tools. And I would like you to have a good discussion uh, with your breakout room about where that conversation could go in a bad way and how you could get that conversation to be good at the end. Again, oh, and I did not do this last time. My apologies, but we will make sure we do this this time. For anyone who prefers, you can type up your responses during the breakout and then paste them in the Zoom chat when you're ready. Uh, we will first go through some verbal responses to give you time to type. All right, Mr. Schmidt, are you still out there? We are ready to go. Nine plus All one. Right. Nine plus one. And let's give it a good shot. All right. Opening the rooms now. All right. It looks like everybody is back. Cool. All right. So please raise your hands to report out. And if you're going to report in the chat, please start getting that typed up and hold off on hitting send for a moment. So, uh, I'd like to hear from a few people. Please raise your hand. Go Cooper. Um, so my group looked at situation one. Okay. Uh, 
for like person one, I think one of the like big things they can do is start off by like um, contrasting their point um, and, and just iterating that they're not trying to attack person two and that they're just trying to figure out what the situ like figure out what to do, um, figure out maybe why it's a part wasn't ready yet. And they're just trying to figure that out instead of actually attacking the person. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Preston. My group focused on um, conversation one. And mm -hmm. we said, as an example, for person one, if someone or for person two, if someone asks you to make their part before another, you should first go through to the C and check the CNC order form or um, talk to Franklin to get things switched around before you go ahead and do that. And then person one should also paraphrase to the other person so that they don't, so that person two doesn't, can feel heard and doesn't feel hurt. So the matter can get settled quickly. Excellent, very good. Thank you very much, Preston. Who else? All right. If there's anybody else who wants to raise their hand, please go ahead. Um, otherwise, uh, while that person may be thinking about that, let's go to the chat. Does anybody have anything to share in the chat? And Mr. Schultz, perhaps you can help out with the chat side. Uh, but Aaron, let's go. Aaron's got his hand up. Let's go to Aaron. Um. My group was also focused on conversation one, and we figured that uh, it is important for one to, much like the other groups we're talking about, uh, contrast after whatever misunderstanding ensues from this. Um, to, oh, I didn't mean to try to push anything or say that there was something wrong with not working on this, I just wanted to make sure it was getting through all right. And then a bit of that uh, suggestion bit in that, so then we did a little bit of a part on, so then when can I expect it to be done so I can work on something that fits into that time frame? Oh, very good, very good, thank you. All right, let's uh, let's go to the chat. Uh, if you the have, chat yet. Okay, if you have typed something, please go ahead and hit send. Nothing in the chat? Nope. OK. Well, then we're going to move along. And we're going to talk a little bit about reality and try to get some reassurance in here. These are hard tools to remember to use when you are in the middle of a conversation. You might be able to learn to look and make it safe right in the middle of that conversation and, and see that either you or the other person is in verbal silence or verbal violence. But other times, you're not going to realize what has happened until later. Somebody might even have to tell you what happened because they saw it. And you have to go back and fix it, like in our example. Or sometimes you have to wait until later because you need space and time for emotions to subside. So as I said before, it is hard to do this well. I have problems doing this well. But if each of you keep trying, if each of you do the repeat part, you will get better. You will improve your relationships after a conversation turned crucial. You will have better communication throughout your team. Something that your team has going for it is that all of you who are here have now gone through this training. Some of the Huskies, as we said, have now gone through this four times. This gives you a common language and common cues so that hopefully, if you hear someone using these skills with you, you'll be able to recognize that the conversation has turned crucial and you need to pause and rebuild the relationship. So now that you understand what a crucial conversation is, take a moment for introspection. 
Do you have any places in your life that aren't going well? Relationships that feel stuck because you can't get past something that was said or done in the past? Or maybe it's because you've played out these scenarios in your head and they all end up with you and the other person in either verbal silence or verbal violence. Think through why you feel that way. If you apologize for your part in the conversation, do you think that you could get back into a dialogue with the other person? Remember that our truth really enables a change of heart. There are many more skills for crucial conversations that I would love to teach you. There are even skills for how to respectfully hold other people accountable, which we've covered in workshops in prior years and is on the YouTube channel. If you ever get the chance, pick up these books or take the professional training. They are both awesome. And please note that these slides and other resources are going to be linked in the video on our YouTube channel. For those of you who like silly acronyms, here's a list of the ones that we use tonight. And we would like as many of you as have interest to come to the next professional skills workshop. So we'll be talking about crucial influence next week. Then we will move on to vision and goals, which will be led by mentors and the concepts that they discuss will apply to all teams. And then on November 25th, the captains of the Huskies will be focused on refining their mission objectives and goals for this upcoming year. So tonight or tomorrow, in the slides that you have on this last slide, there's this link. Please capture any feedback on this leadership workshop session in terms of what we should keep doing, what we should consider fixing, or what we should consider trying next time. Please, please be brutally honest and compassionate with your responses. Thank you all very much for learning and for sharing tonight. Yes, Franklin. I just wanted to say, right now, like three people have added to the KFT from last week. There's, there's, a, there's a lot more than like three good things about each week. So if everybody takes a second to fill that out, it's awesome. Three good things three bad things and three things we ought to try. We want at least nine more from tonight, right? <laughs> Maybe we could get 18 more from tonight. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for that. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. It's just after nine and I will see a bunch of you on Wednesday. Take care. Thank you thank to you. Mr. John and Mr. Schultz so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, and we hope to see everybody next week.